I'm Brian Mutel, a sales engineer here at Snowflake, working with state and local government and higher education customers across the U.S. Today, we're going to walk through projection and aggregation policies in Snowflake. We'll discuss what they are, who should use them, and how they work, including a demo. Let's take a look. Let's check out projection and aggregation policies, which are generally available. Projection policies dictate whether a column can be shown as the output of a SQL query. This provides column level security for sensitive information like PII and PHI. Aggregation policies are table level protection that avoid leaking individual rows of data by defining the minimum size of a group for an aggregation. The challenge that these policies solve for is retaining the usability and analytical value of your data while maintaining the privacy of the individuals within your data. Benefits of these features is that it allows you to use this sensitive data in a way that preserves this privacy. For example, with a projection policy, you can use social security number as a join key without revealing social security number on an individual basis. For aggregation policies, you can do aggregations across groups without revealing details about individual entities. This affects all Snowflake workloads, but chiefly collaboration, allowing groups to share data more easily because it is better protected. Agencies for which this might be in particular use are agencies that have sensitive data, health, human services, education, and corrections. Personas that would use these capabilities are data stewards who maintain and govern data within an organization and business leaders looking for new opportunities to democratize and use data across teams, business units, and departments. This is important because it allows better and more collaboration on sensitive data using that balance between privacy and utility. Looking at projection policies in detail, those are first-class objects that live in a schema like other governance policies within Snowflake. These policies dictate whether or not a column can be shown in the output of a SQL query, a select statement, for example. An example use case is in public health case data. An admin would want to restrict an analyst's ability to see an individual's social security number. However, that analyst might need to join that data to other data based on social security number. In this example, the admin can assign a projection policy to these columns that will allow the analyst to join and look up data based on that column without viewing the actual values. The syntax to create a projection policy is similar to that of other governance policies within Snowflake. When defining the policy, you will simply dictate true to project a column or false to not project a column. In this example here, based on user roles, when the current role is evaluated to analyst, columns will be allowed to be projected. Otherwise, all roles will not see that column. Other criteria for projection policies can be tags, account identifiers, and other shares of data. The documentation is linked here. Once you've created the policy, simply run an alter table statement specifying the columns that should not be projected. When you run a query with a projection policy on that table, you can do aggregations, filters, group buys, and joins on those columns, but you cannot see that column in a query. So that first query, you would see the number of transaction IDs based on social security number. But in the second query, where you simply run a select statement for SSN, you cannot see that column since it is projection constrained. You can replace the projection policy that is applied to a column by running another alter table statement and forcing that new projection policy on the column of interest. To remove a projection policy, simply run an alter table statement with unset projection policy against the projection constrained column. You can monitor projection policies through the projection policies view in the account usage schema of your Snowflake database. 
You can also look at the policy references table in the information schema of a database to identify projection policy references. You can return two different syntaxes, a row for each object that has a projection policy on it and a row for each policy assigned to the table. Aggregation policies specify the minimum group size that will return results when a query runs an aggregation. This prevents what's called thin cell slicing through small cell suppression. An example is when an analyst looking at human resource data needs to see salaries by department without potentially revealing individual salaries. In this fake data here, a aggregation policy requiring at least two rows per group would show the average salary for health, but not for public safety or transportation, since that group is not large enough. Running the average salary by group would reveal Bob and Charlie's salary, since they're the only ones within their agency. To create an aggregation policy, you specify the minimum group size that will return the results of an aggregation. In this example here, an admin can query data without an aggregation constraint, while any other role would only see groups with greater than or equal to five individuals. You can also modify an aggregation policy and change the minimum group size. Here, we're changing it to two. Since aggregation policies are set at the table level, simply run an alter table statement to apply a policy. In this example, we have a minimum group size of 10, and we're counting the number of individuals in each department. Without an aggregation policy, we see marketing and human resources in the results. With that aggregation policy, we don't see those two departments since they have fewer than 10 employees. An entity level aggregation policy enables you to roll up individual rows to entities. So you can protect not only row level information, but entity level information. In this example here, an analyst might be looking at average income across households, but they don't want to know individual or household level income. An aggregation policy without an entity key with a minimum group size of three would still show the three individuals within that first household. Using household ID as an entity key will protect household income. You can alter an aggregation policy by using force in an alter table statement and then unset to detach an aggregation policy from a table. There is an aggregation policies view in the account usage schema of your Snowflake database for all aggregation policies within your account. You can also use the policy references information schema table function to look at aggregation policy references. Similar to projection policies, you can return a row for each object with a policy set on it or a row for each policy assigned to the table. Projection and aggregation policies are available in all Snowflake regions, including Gulf Cloud. Thanks for taking a look at projection and aggregation policies with us. We saw how to apply them, how aggregation policies prevent the small cell identification of low member groups, and how projection policies limit which columns can be shown as the result of the query. These are incredibly important features in data governance, allowing the appropriate people to leverage your data for analytic insights without needlessly exposing sensitive information at the real level.